GCSE Economics video with me, Mr. Goff, from MrGoff.com. Today's video will focus on monopolies, oligopolies, and competitive markets. A true monopoly is where there is only one producer or seller of a product. There are a number of reasons why this might occur. Intellectual property, which covers copyrights and patents, means that people who come up with things and people who invent new products have the sole rights to sell them for a certain period of time. In some cases, a monopoly comes about because one firm grows so large that they're able to gain massive economies of scale such that other firms are no longer able to compete with them. In some instances, location can lead to small regionalised monopolies. If you consider a small village with only one shop, they have the monopoly on selling things like bread and milk unless you want to go further into the larger towns. This means they often charge higher prices than a similar shop in a bigger town. Another example of a location monopoly can be seen if you go to somewhere like a zoo or a theme park. When you go there, you'll find that food and drinks are priced higher than outside of the park because while you are there, they have a monopoly for those products. In the UK, the law used to say that only Royal Mail could deliver letters, but there are no longer any legal reasons in the UK for a monopoly to exist. Monopolies tend to be very large businesses that can benefit from economies of scale. Things like buying in bulk and having experts in every department. Monopolies are generally thought to be inefficient because of the lack of competition that they face, not forcing them to innovate or become more efficient. They have complete control over prices, but if they raise their prices too high, that doesn't mean they'll keep selling their products. Generally, we would expect the monopoly market to lead to higher prices, but there are reasons why it might not. In some cases, they may choose to use their cost advantages to lower their prices and make higher sales. Although true monopolies are quite rare, Many firms have what is known as monopoly power. Any firm with over 25% market share is considered to have monopoly power. These tend to be very large firms with big cost advantages over their competitors, making it possible for them to set prices far more so than their competitors. Microsoft Windows has over a 75% market share when it comes to desktop operating systems. The size of Microsoft means that they're able to invest a lot of money in continuous research and development. This makes it very difficult for new firms to compete with them. With a 27% share of the UK grocery market, Tesco is the only firm to have monopoly power. This means that they've got cost advantages over their rivals and are able to set lower prices in most cases. Although this advantage has not been enough to prevent new firms like Aldi and Lidl coming into the market, specifically to disrupt with lower prices. With 33% of the UK broadband market, BT also has monopoly power. This is helped by the fact that they own a lot of the underlying infrastructure for the broadband network. Oligopolies are markets where the five largest firms control 50% or more of the market. There are generally several large firms, but there may also be some smaller firms in an oligopolistic market. An example of this would be the UK cinema market. The three largest players, Cineworld, Odeon and View, take up over 75% of market share. They are generally considered to be less efficient than a competitive market, but more efficient than monopolies. These firms have some control over prices. How hard they compete with each other in the area of price will really determine how efficient an oligopolistic market is. There are laws against the practice of collusion, which is where firms get together to agree to keep prices unnaturally high. A competitive market is one where there are a large number of firms. These will mostly be small to medium sized firms. Competitive markets are considered to be the most efficient because firms are forced to consider their efficiency in order to make cost savings so that they're able to compete on price. The market forces of supply and demand control prices far more than firms themselves. This tends to lead to lower overall prices. That brings us to the end of this video on monopolies, oligopolies and competitive markets. 
Join me again for another video when I'll be looking at production and productivity. In the meantime, try the free resources at mrgoff.com to help you study economics. And until next time, it's bye for now.